Hey there, welcome to the latest installment of Pseudo Show Labs. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the hardware refresh I'm going through for my home lab. First, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's supported uh, the Pseudo Show over the last couple of years. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I know I've been out for the last couple months. Uh, I'm back, ready to create more content. I actually have some podcasts that will be uh, published. I'm going to hold off on publishing them until September, but we, uh, I'm back into the swing of things. I've just been traveling for work and then I got sick. It, it, things just uh, um, ended up not working out very well uh, this summer uh, it, from a content creation perspective for me. So I'm back, I'm back in the game. So you're going to start seeing more content from me uh, uh, here in the coming months. So make sure to get subscribed. There's uh, lots of great stuff I have planned. I have uh, content focused around, well, my hardware, my new uh, lab. I have uh, content focused around some software. So right into the hardware. So my hardware lab has gone through several iterations over the years. This uh, particular iteration has probably been my favorite, the, the, the one that I'm retiring. Now, uh, this uh, has been around, I, I picked up all this hardware, I believe in 2016. Uh, they're super micro boards with a Xeon D series processor, specifically the Xeon D1518. So they have four cores, eight threads. Uh, uh, now these, this is a total of three systems. And then each system has 32 gigabytes of RAM and then uh, a one terabyte SSD for my, for Gluster. And then a M SATA uh, drive for the operating system. These have been running great. Yeah, um, but lately I've had some issues with the hardware. There's been cooling issues that uh, a couple weeks ago, I updated the uh, kernel on uh, on one of the systems and rebooted and then during and it just wouldn't come back up until I pow uh, completely powered it down uh, and started back up. But when it rebooted, it didn't recognize um, the OS drive. So that really just prompted me, I got to get something new. And yeah, you know, these systems are you know, six years old, you know, hardware fails. So I decided to purchase uh, just a single system. In this case, I decided to go for uh, a Lenovo ThinkStation P360 Ultra. Uh, yeah, so I'm going with one system, one big powerful system. Um, but in this case, it's not big. This system is tiny and I think it is really cool. So the, here it is. It is, as you can, you probably can't tell for scale, but for scale, this is a Sony uh, XA2 phone. And if I just put it on top of here, you can see this thing is really small. Uh, one of, I, I think it is a really cool device. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting it ready to run everything. I did a lot of research before I bought this, and this is what I decided to go with due to its size. And also, I'm uh, people I've already been asked this, why don't I just buy the parts and build my own system. Um, actually, this was cheaper than building my own system right now. Um, significantly cheaper. It was not, uh, it was, this was a, a no brainer versus building my own system, at least the way I would want to build a system. But this is exactly what I want right now. And I'm hopeful that this will last me uh, another six years. Um, I really, I really would like this type of hardware to last me at least uh, five to six years. So let's go ahead and 
you know, get right into it. So the Lenovo ThinkStation P360 Ultra has some impressive specs for a device this size. Mine came with a Core i7, a 12th gen Intel processor, 64 gigabytes of memory, a one terabyte SSD, Intel integrated graphics, and a dedicated NVIDIA RTX A2000, and then two NIC ports, one of them being two and a half gig, and then Wi-Fi, and then Pretty good internal expansion for a device of this size, and the I.O. externally is pretty good as well. I wanted to really show this off uh, to the community because I was blown away by this system's serviceability and expandability. So you know, let's go ahead and start off and take a look at the front of the system. So it has two Thunderbolt ports one USB 3 port, an audio jack. I mean, this is a workstation. It is meant to be uh, used as a workstation, as a desktop, not as a server. But uh, you know, it will work for that use case, of course. Any system can be used as a server. On the back, uh, there's uh, two Ethernet ports. This port right here is a two and a half gig Ethernet port. This is a one gig. The three display ports uh, are for the integrated Intel graphics. And then uh, four USB 3 ports and then the power port. And then here, just right above, this is the, uh, or below, depending on your orientation. This is a, a, actually, it's a PCI slot. And then right here is the NVIDIA graphics card. So, but, you know, let's go and get inside. So like, this is a completely toolless system and I love it. So to get into the system, all you do is lift this up and pull it up. Easy as that. And, and set that aside. So let's go ahead and start on this side. So first right here is uh, some cooling and a heat sink. This is actually right, right below here is the SSDs. So this system came with one one terabyte SSD. I added another one terabyte SSD. And then here's the PCI slot, the empty one. And then it has two additional DDR5 sodium slots that I can populate. I'm probably going to populate that with uh, another 64 gigs, so a total of 128 gigs of RAM. Now on the other side, uh, here's the cooling for the CPU, and then here's the GPU. And you can kind of barely see it, but behind, down here is the uh, other RAM slots. So uh, this thing is very capable. Um, so far, uh, my initial testing, the cooling has been good. It's, uh, I haven't seen any thermal throttling yet. Uh, I will probably post some Geekbench scores here shortly. Yeah, this has been a great system um, to to mess around with so far. So I already have Fedora on this and I'm going to be uh, uh, getting it all configured. I think the only thing that may end up being a problem, I don't know if it will or not, but that's the external power supply. So this is a 300 watt power supply. The GPU, because it's a, essentially what was the Quadro line, it's a workstation card. It's actually a very low power card, so I'm not too worried about that um, overall. But the, you know, uh, I'm gonna. Th this is just gonna make it more because it's using this external power supply. The only thing I'm worried about is I probably won't be able to use something like uh, uh, the Pi KVM's power functionality uh, for so I can remote power on and off this uh, device. But you know, at that, that's a small price to pay for actually a device that is very capable and very actually 
for a workstation class machine, this is a very affordable machine. So this device, um, I was able to get it on sale for, I believe, 1800 US dollars. Uh, so for a workstation class machine, this is a very affordable machine. Right now, most of the workstation class machines on Lenovo's website are well over $2,000, uh, well specced or equivalently specced, I should say. If you're interested in the P360 Ultra, there'll be a link down below in the show notes. And make sure to get subscribed. Uh, the Pseudo Show podcast is uh, coming back. You know, we've been off since June, but we will be... Uh, uh, back uh, releasing regular episodes. Uh, N- Neil and Bill will be joining me uh, fairly regularly. And uh, also, you want to be subscribed for uh, Pseudo Show Labs content. I'll be doing more hardware reviews. I'll be definitely doing more software how tos. Uh, I'll be, I'm uh, getting ready to publish a, a video around free IPA as well as a, a video around uh, CrowdSec. Uh, if you're interested in CrowdSec, There'll be uh, links uh, below to the podcast episodes with uh, the one of the founders of CrowdSec. Also, uh, if you're interested in what I've done before uh, with my hardware lab uh, on those uh, D series uh, uh, systems that I uh, uh, just retired, go check out the over how to video. I, I thought that was a pretty good how to. It's a little long, but it's uh, a great video uh, and how how to do uh how to install and get going with overt